Hello and welcome to the new episode of the True Spectrum project. Today we're having a very special guest, Claire, who will not necessarily be diving very deep into the complexities of the global issues, but would rather share her perspectives and uh, how she managed to expand her True Spectrum uh, based on one of the global issues, based on the Russian invasion of Ukraine during her volunteering. So we will get to know how volunteering can be used as a tool to get to know different global issues more in depth. And thank you so much for contributing to our project. And let's start by you introducing yourself. Part one, you and your story. Truth through my lenses. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I think you're doing great work and I'm excited to be a part of this. My name is Claire Keppel. I'm 23 years old. Right now I'm living in the Chicago area. I went to school in Colorado and studied political science and physiology with a concentration in public health. And as Anastasia was saying, I studied abroad in Rome in 2022 for a spring semester. And that's kind of how I started to get involved with the Berlin arrival support, just having that proximity to it. So yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, We're also excited to have you here, as I said. um, So what would you say uh, was your motivation to become a part of Berlin arrival support uh, during your Erasmus? I think a huge part of it is, of course, I was in Europe at the time. And being an American, I think a lot of times we see all of these news and invasions and protests and whatever is going on in the world abroad. We see it and we can care about it and read about it and all of these things. But I often kind of feel a little bit far removed and displaced from it just from simple proximity. And so since I was in Rome and all this was unfolding and we were really diving deep into it in my classes and talking about European history and immigration and war and invasions and things like that. So it was very at the forefront of my mind. And again, kind of having that proximity to it, I felt like I was in a really good position to have a little bit more direct action and volunteer somewhere that would actually be very demanding and have some actual impact rather than working from afar, which I think a lot of times that's kind of how it goes when you're not as close to the actual situation. So since I was there, I just kind of the stars aligned in my my position and I was able to have that. And I found Berlin arrival support and it worked for many reasons. I think a lot of volunteering during that time like they were looking for a lot of like lawyers and like doing pro bono work or nurses and things like that and I didn't necessarily have those qualifications so finding Berlin arrival support was a great area to kind of take that step to directly help everyone coming in. That sounds really great and your idea or what you mentioned that uh, you prefer on-site volunteering to online volunteering because it has kind of a deeper connection it really resonates with me. So it's a, yeah, it's a great thing you did. Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, did you have any prior volunteering experiences before? Yeah, like here and there, you know, through my like younger years in school, in grade school, high school, things like that with my family to just doing like small fundraising and throughout university to just parts of clubs and just taking time to volunteer. I would say this was definitely my first, not bigger opportunity, but one that had definitely the most impact, especially like on like such a full scale of things. So I had had like experience in volunteering and kind of like knew how volunteer operations worked, but I would say this was definitely the biggest take on that I had had going into it. And would you say that actually directly interacting with Ukrainian refugees provided you with a deeper understanding of the invasion? Definitely. I think, again, you can kind of, you can understand everything on an intellectual level, but until you actually are interacting with someone and kind of realizing the complexities that every individual and every family is going through, you won't really understand how deep and how complex the situation can be. And When you start, I mean, I only had a glimpse into the invasion and how people were being affected. And even just from that small glimpse, I had an understanding of how each family had all of this burden on them from the invasion. And when you start thinking about it and multiplying it by a whole country and everyone around it, I think you really understand how complex it can be when you're actually on the ground interacting with people. I will say, like, I had 
one thing that kind of stood out to me was I was volunteering and I went to the bathroom, so I wasn't there, but I was working at the pet aid station and a woman came up to the other volunteer and was asking where I went because she wanted me to help her paint her nails to kind of feel like a woman again. And I think that sense of like self-identity gets lost. And that's something that I would not have understood if I wasn't on the ground interacting with people, like that sense of self and that sense of like what's happening, why, why, and like, where do I belong in this situation? I think that actual human connection really does come out and just really connects you to the, the situation more too. Thank you for sharing. I totally also agree actually, because I feel like very often on the news we see numbers, but we don't actually like see people's lives. And then when you actually volunteer and get to interact with people, then it changes and you see it kind of in a wider perspective. Most definitely. Yeah. Reflecting on your time at the Berlin Arrival Support, how did your experiences ha help you understand the challenges which are faced by individuals with different backgrounds? I think in general, you know, you can feel like you have this sense of empathy for a situation and whether that's somewhere global and abroad or just in your neighborhood or a friend or family, I think you can always feel like you have that insight, but once you kind of are in and on the ground actually working with people, I think your sense of curiosity and empathy really do come to fruition. And you, it's like, it's very direct. You almost, you need to have that sense of curiosity to really, like really try and understand and make the most, the most positive impact you can. So I think just having that sense of whether it is something abroad and like super intense and serious and things like that. Or if it's just someone who is just like new and has a different cultural background than you and you're just trying to understand them, I think realizing that not everything is done in your way and like your cultural background and just having that sense of curiosity, I think is a huge aspect of just being able to like expand on your empathy and understanding as well. Sounds great. Thank you for sharing. Part two, global dialogue. Bridging the divide. Can you describe a specific example or instance when your volunteering work required you to navigate a cultural challenge or maybe something related to communication styles or expectations? Definitely. I think one of my biggest worries about going in, and I was honestly hesitant to go and volunteer somewhere that I didn't speak the language. So of course I'm fluent in English, but that's the only language I can speak. And I was very hesitant on being kind of in the way where I didn't want to have people coming in feel like they had to speak in my way when they were the ones who needed the help. And so the language was a huge concern. And I mean, I was very blown away where people were not frustrated at all with me. And I was just very like, that is, that takes a lot of like courage for them to just like kind of just go with it. And like, they're just in like a situation where people were just trying to figure out what to do. And so there wasn't a sense of frustration. I just, I had my own little plan of like Google Translate and I had screenshots of just general prompts and questions, introducing myself, saying I was there with Berlin arrival support, offering directions to buy train tickets, to get food, COVID vaccines and shots, all of that stuff. And so I think that was one where I was very nervous about it, but I was able to kind of work around that with the help of Google Translate and just general mm -hmm. technology and other volunteers too, you know, I mean, at the train station, we each had vests with different, with what languages we spoke, where we were from. And I think that was a huge help too, where maybe the people coming in didn't know that, but it, for me, if there was someone who still you know, like the Google Translate or something like that wasn't working, it's a very easy indicator for me to grab someone who could help me in that sense. So yeah, the language barrier was huge for me, but I do think we are lucky to live in a time where we can, you know, expand that and like have a have that be a help rather than prevent people from coming in and volunteering and doing some important work. Yeah, definitely. How would you say that you originally overcame these feelings of nervousness and the potential language barrier before making this big step from Rome to Berlin to volunteer? I mean, again, I just, I didn't, I had a sense of like, 
I mean, I was very displaced from the whole situation. You know, I was very sensitive to the fact that I was already living in Rome as an American. So like that already, I just kind of like, you know, not that a sense of belonging was important. I mean, the whole experience was for me to go and learn about different cultures and things like that. But I knew that going and volunteering would have very real consequences for the people. This wasn't something that I could just go do for myself to like learn about a new culture. Like this was very impactful and would make a huge difference on each individual person or family's like journey through the invasion. So I was very like nervous about how my like volunteerism would come off, if it would be the correct way of doing it, if you know, if those cultural differences in delivery would be different. But I think ultimately I just decided that the situation was just too dire not to. And I was there in May. So the invasion had already occurred for a few months and I kind of had heard that like volunteering and government aid and things like that were starting to even dwindle then. And so just, I think going in, knowing, like being self-aware and knowing that I might not have had these like exact skills, but having the good intention behind it ultimately is what had me kind of go through with it. And I am very grateful I did. It's like, even now watching the invasion still unfold, it's I think people who know how I've done it, I've become like a good point of contact for other people in America to kind of just understand it a little bit more, which I think is always important. Yeah, definitely. So in this way, then your tool to expand the true spectrum, to expand like the perspectives on the issue can also be spread to other people. So it's not just while experiencing it, while volunteering, but also after it that it has an impact. It sounds really great. And you mentioned a lot about skills. And I feel like volunteering is something that, especially in times of crisis and especially with other cultures, is something that definitely gives you intercultural competences and skills. How would you say the volunteering shaped your view of the intercultural topics and how does it influence uh, other fields of your life now? I would say kind of going back to a few of my other points, I would just say, I mean, competence, like, you know, like just doing something successfully and efficiently. I think going back to that sense of empathy and understanding has been huge. And I have found having this very like direct impact and feeling like I actually made a difference rather than doing something online or from afar, even just things like looking for jobs and positions like that, you know, I try and find companies or organizations that have that cultural competence and actually are being very thoughtful and intentional around how their work is going to affect other cultures or how they can bring other cultures into their work. So definitely professionally, I've looked at how intercultural competence, you know, it it affects so many different aspects of our lives. Even if you feel like the job you're doing isn't a cultural position, I think just who you draw to your company is a huge aspect of that too. But yeah, I would say, and just in general, like, I mean, I live very close to Chicago. I mean, I think that's a huge, a huge city in America that has just many different types of neighborhoods and pockets and cultures and just like really being curious again, like going back to that fact of just trying to understand and have like more of a mesh and like come at it from a sense of humbleness and ignorance in a way too, where you're willing to learn. Yeah. Sounds really great. If you could describe your volunteering experiences or generally what volunteering means to you in one word, what would it be? That is a tough question. (laughs) I think I would go with progression. I think in general, if you're looking to volunteer, you're working for something that's bigger than yourself and you're willing to give time or resources to something that is progressing towards a unified goal or cause. And I think most people who volunteer, and that I think can apply to all volunteer organizations, no matter what the cause is, are just looking to progress the situation, whether that's in hands-on, just helping people move forward, or if it's just making the cause more well-known. I think usually there's a forward outlook, which I think that volunteering has a huge part of for sure well that's really great uh, i actually i've never thought of this in this way and i really like how you uh, described it and thank you for sharing part three creating synergy connecting to the cause 
Can you share a specific moment at Berlin Arrival Support or any other volunteering organization you've been a part of when you felt deeply connected to people from various cultures? And uh, what made this moment uh, so special for you? I think for me, so I was at Berlin Arrival Support for one, well, I was there for multiple days, but for one full day, I was working at the pet aid station. And I mean, going into it, I was very like, I will be helpful wherever they need me, you know, kind of just going to be a set of hands to help wherever. And when I got there, it was actually the first day I honestly hadn't even really thought of like pets and like how people are going to be traveling and like bringing their pets with them. And so I personally don't have any pets, but I, it made me realize that like something like that is something that people around the world can share that common sense of their family and something that is beyond maybe just like a belonging or a home, but bringing their pets with them was a huge you know, part of their life and like part of their journey. And so when I was working at the pet aid station, it was very, I would say it brought a lot of people joy to just like be able to give their dog or their cat or their bird or whatever pet they had with them, just like give them joy. And it felt like a sense of, you know, like kind of like back to normalcy a little bit. And I think that just kind of like as more of a general sphere, just gave people that sense of like, we all can have that sense of like giving something else to someone that isn't specific to Ukrainians that could be said around the world. And I think it just, it had a very underlying simple way of understanding that, you know, of normalcy and like what people's day-to-day -day lives are. So yeah, that was a huge surprise. I was like, of course people are gonna bring their pets. Why wouldn't they? And I just was like, wow, that, that was something special that I just kind of you know, didn't realize was going to be a part of it. And as much as they have a completely different background and cultural experience and just life, that was something that I could have seen here in the States as well. So it, it was kind of, it was a melting point for sure. Yeah, sounds really great. I also feel like um, very often people focus uh, when we talk about um, cross-cultural communication or general differences between cultures, people actually focus on differences rather on similarities. Right. So it's really nice that you mentioned this like common point that's where people kind of feel like they belong to the planet Earth and not to a certain yeah, country. Exactly. So it was it, like to your point, it was just a very common ground. You know, it, it, it going into it, I felt like I was maybe not going to be the right fit for volunteering. But, you know, I found some of those common grounds. And just for one more quick example, like I was just like helping a mother and daughter to just talking through Google Translate. And I offered to go get them some water and food, but they just kind of wanted me to stay with them until their train was going to come. And we ended up just like having a, I mean, over Google Translate, but a conversation about like, they were like, your freckles are so nice. And then I started asking them about their, like where they were from. And just, I mean, I think that gets looked by like a lot where it also like, it kind of just reminded of me and my mom and that like mother daughter connection. I think, yes, of course the invasion is at the very utmost top of everyone's minds, but there are definitely ways that there are common goals and can bring some normalcy into the situation. Yeah, and as a volunteer, you could actually like have space and the capacity to offer it to people. I think it's very valuable. For sure. From your perspective, what are some small but impactful actions that individuals uh, can take to contribute to the causes they care about? I would say the biggest thing for me would be education, just educating yourself. Even for me and the Berlin Arrival Support, kind of like how I got there. I mean, of course, I was educating myself on the history of Ukraine and Ukraine and Russia's relationship and the invasion and just like all of the history there. So I could actually try like the most I could to understand the situation. But then beyond that, I also started to educate myself on how I could best serve and with what organization, in which country, which volunteering is actually needed and like doing that research and learning about where I could actually be most effective. So I think just in general, educating yourself, you're gonna start to learn more about the topic or the action that you wanna take. And once you start to learn that and you have more of a cohesive understanding, it's just gonna radiate off of you. And I think more people will become curious about it. And in that moment, if someone is asking you about what you are like caring for and what you are taking action for, 
you can just, if you have the education and the knowledge behind it, you can like right there on the spot, have an in-depth, very cohesive conversation that could potentially spark something in them that would want them to take action either in this cause or a different cause that they care about. But I think it can just be a domino effect. And while education like definitely is a privilege, I think it is something that is not tangible that a lot of people can in some form have a part of their life, you know, whether that's just a quick research on your phone or talking to someone else and just like learning about a different perspective. I think in most cases or in a lot of people's understandings, you can have some sort of education in some form. So I think that also kind of gives it a little bit of a fair play for something that if you want to contribute, you can kind of everyone can kind of start at their own base with that part rather than time or money and things like that i think that's a huge a huge part yeah i really like how you mentioned like even the smallest actions of actually talking to people that doesn't like actually cost anything so in this way because often people have the feeling oh my god education i have to like dedicate a lot of time a lot of space buy a book Mm -hmm. or something but it can actually be something really really that gets overlooked something smaller so it's a good point how does direct interaction with individuals through in-person volunteering uh, different in your opinion uh, from online volunteering you've already touched on it in the beginning but maybe you could explain a bit more for sure i mean yeah like as i had said before i think you just you gain a lot of nuance to the situation you gain a lot of those personal aspects as you mentioned a lot of times you just see numbers and you see very broad news stories or something that's like you know like a very big escalation or something like in a major city or like especially for this situation in ukraine like something like Zelensky coming to the states and like speaking with our president like you see like the very like big emotions and i think when you're volunteering in any sense whether that is online or not but especially in person you really just gain again like the nuance and the understanding of the actual personal level and it is easy to get caught up in the news cycle of this is like just more of a fact of it's just happening versus this is happening and this is actually how it's affecting people and i think having that authentic human connection with someone like in person even if it's just one person, I think it opens your sense of what is actually happening and affecting the people on the ground rather than a broad sense of things. Thank you for your answer. So just to wrap wrap up this conversation, staying informed through stories and also personal experiences can be a very, very valuable tool. Also, as you mentioned, in the education part, but also as a volunteer, just learning about different different issues people have to deal with, getting to know different people, getting to know differences, but also similarities. Are there some resources or organizations that you could recommend for those who are interested in expanding their understanding of the intercultural issues? Yeah, for sure. I would say, generally speaking, I would just, again, kind of do some research on what you would like to learn about in the intercultural issues. You know, I think again like we see a lot of like the larger scale issues in the world but there are many more than just kind of what we see like covered broadly and so with that said like i would say start locally you know as i've kind of mentioned before like especially again like being in america like a lot of times things feel very far away and so the one of the reasons why i decided to go with berlin arrival support is because i had like it wasn't local per se but the proximity and so i would say start locally start somewhere where you know, you can see that direct impact like in your own community. Again, like, I mean, there's also, even if it's a little bit further or things like that, like for me, I live close to Chicago, as I've said, and there's many protests and gatherings or like just discussion boards, things like that. Of course, I think there are larger corporations for volunteering, but I think if you're just starting out too, I think just kind of learning about where you feel like you belong, especially like locally with volunteering. And again, just going to like the demonstrations and things like that, I think are a good way to just kind of get a base just to like start. And then 
once you do go to something like that, you're going to just meet people who will then also have more resources and ways of getting involved and things like that. So I think, yeah, just getting into the community and learning about what's available to you would be a huge way to start that off. Thank you. I feel like the reflection, like self-reflection was really at the core of your um, answer that it's not reasonable for people to just pick anything because just for the sake of it but as you said to be like really reflective about what you can do what you would like to do which kind of things you would like to uh, get connected with so i think it's very profound what you shared and thank you so much for this uh, very enlightening and interesting and also somehow very light interview even though the topic is not so light um, yeah i'm really grateful and i'm sure that it did help uh, many of our uh, viewers to get to know a little bit more about this um, russian invasion of ukraine but also about the how volunteering can be a very powerful tool in intercultural communication making an impact and also in self-development so thank you so much for sure yeah thank you for having me all right well it was lovely meeting you i wish you the best and yeah please don't hesitate if you need any help okay perfect thank you so much of have a course. nice rest of your day. thank you you too